Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tales from the Doghouse Separation Anxiety Explained. I am Stacey Bell with Focused Fun in the U.S., and with me today is... Hello, I'm Ness Jones, um, and this is Bertha, and I am from Separation Anxiety in Dogs Decoded in Australia. Lovely, lovely. So what are we talking about today, Ness? We are talking about when training stalls and the whys and the wheres and what to do about it. Right, right. So I think this is a really good one to talk about because um, we know that learning isn't a straight line and particularly when we're working through um, a, a behavioral issue that's rooted kind of in emotions like that, it can be even harder to work through. Um, and we do see variability in training. So I think it's important to address like what's normal variability, when do we stop and really reassess, um, and that sort of thing. So let's, um, let's talk about that. Hmm. Sounds like a plan. All right. So, um, yes. So the difference between re- variability, I guess, and regression, Stacey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So for me, um, you know, just like even me just running, I have good days and bad, like say I'm a runner, I do trail running. Sometimes I train for races. Most of the time I just do it for fun, but you know, I can eat the same breakfast, have the same amount of sleep, you know, nothing different in my life, but just one day can be like a lot harder than the next day. And it doesn't mean, um, usually next time I run, it's fine. Um, And so that kind of variability in either doing a new skill or a skill that you already have is is normal. And we see that a lot with um, things like grief um, with people, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so if you've had a loss in your life, some days might be easier and other days might be harder. And sometimes there might be a reason for that, like an anniversary or the holidays or something like that. And sometimes it's just, you know. The day is what the day is. I was going um, so through I think some grief yesterday. You were about yeah, what? I found out her sister died. She, oh no! Yeah, they're only four and a half, um, and sounds like she got taken by a snake. Oh geez! Oh, I'm devastated. Yeah. I was in floods yesterday. I just yeah woke up this morning going oh poor little dog. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awful. Yeah, that's awful. it's really sad. Anyway, yeah. sorry, I just thought you mentioned grief, so <laughs> yeah, and then I figured, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, no, so I think there's normal variability in training, so the ups and downs, and so what I'm looking for there, like, so when I'm working with a client, we have a graph of every exercise that they do, and so we can look at you know the ups and downs within training, but when we look at the trend line we're wanting to make sure that trend is um, still going up, right? So Mm. even if they had a few bad sessions, they're still overall making progress. And I think when you get into um, more of a regression, which is a um, longer term period of being stuck or stalled out or on a plateau even, not even that they're going down, but if they're just like stuck in the same place, then I think it's, you know, time to uh, take a, a closer look at the big overall picture and just do a total reassessment of what's going on in um, that dog's training in their life and all of that. Yeah. I, that graph you're talking about, I mean, ideally we want it, if we're starting here at the bottom, we want it to be a nice straight line like that. Mm-hmm. But we have to expect it's more like a wave that's rising and we want the peaks Mm -hmm. to keep rising and getting higher and we want the troughs to get shallower and shallower. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that for me is where we, that would be regression. That would be variability, you know, ups and the downs Mm -hmm. and the ups and downs. With that graph with regression, it's more, it's more, um, you know, you're living in the down zone more, aren't you? Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're, um, if you're looking at that line of best fit or your trend line, it, it can be very flat or even, you know, decreasing. So you might, you know, your, your average duration is going down. So I do think that 
that for um, pet parents, even one or two bad sessions can be really discouraging. So mm. I think um, the biggest thing there is just to reassure people that that's a normal part of learning and not anything to worry about, right? Yes. Um, yeah, um, so, to, to, to understand, recognize it, obviously, and but also recognize that it is normal, 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 and not to mm-hmm. not to get too. I, I think the one of the hard things about that is once you have that, when you when you're maybe doing the training and you're leaving your dog, you probably get more anxious because you've had that variability, um, and then mm-hmm. that's obviously going to impact your dog. So it could actually impact the next time you leave. So you've got to be really careful about about that and um, if you can normalize it and say this is normal I've got to expect this don't get too Mm -hmm. worried about it and too anxious about it you're more likely to have a better session the next time than if you walk Mm -hmm. out the door feeling stressed and anxious yourself right right um and then as far as the Mm -hmm. longer term regressions go um just thinking about like you know sometimes regressions happen and we don't know why they happen. And that can, I think, be harder. I think it's harder when regression yes. happen and we can't um, point to something and say, this is why it's happening. Um, mm. As in there's the no things- over threshold moments. Like we know the dog didn't go have sort of like a major meltdown because. Bad experience. You had bad experience. Because, yeah, right. you had a experience. Yeah. Emergency or you didn't get home when you expected or whatever it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that can be one of the, um, I think that's a, a m- m- most of my clients, I'm, I'm trying to think of an exception right now and I can't, but most of my clients are really, really good about not leaving their dog for over threshold experiences, whether it's an emergency or just everyday stuff. So um, that's something that is, is a really important piece of the training. So we always try to make sure that we set up um, multiple, you know, build their village. So they have multiple people that could watch their dog and, and hopefully people that could do it last minute as well. Um, so that doesn't, in my experience, I know that that is a contributor to regression, but in my experience with my clients, that hasn't helped happen very much because we do try to kind of guard against that. Um, Other things that um, I see that can um, kind of push a dog into a regression type of state are um, like if they have um, pain or some sort of medical issue or even something like allergies, ear infections, anything you know, a uh, urinary tract infection, um, especially an undiagnosed type of thing, even, you know, especially pain, um, that can really throw a dog into uh, regression. So typically when um, we're not seeing any other obvious signs, um, like a big change in routine or something like that, then I will suggest that um, yeah my clients will go to the vet to just get their dog, uh, like a full vet check, um, make sure that everything is being addressed. And and then that can be another good opportunity to speak with your vet about um, medication as another way to support your dog. Uh, Even if they're already on medication, sometimes that can be tweaked a little bit to better, to better support your dog. Yeah, Um, yeah, for sure. Um, It it could be something you're not even aware of. Like, I mean, you mm -hmm. might be doing training or you might pop out and you know you're under the dog's threshold. Um, I mean, it could be something as weird as a bird flying into your window and making a mm. bang and scaring the dog if mm-hmm. it's, you know, yeah. maybe a little bit mm-hmm. not as mm-hmm. confident or, you know, robust. Um, or mm-hmm. it could be maybe something happening next door, like, you know, workmen or, who, you know, it could just be something really random that you don't can't control. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. You therefore, in that sense, I guess it's not really worth worrying too much about it, except, yeah, obviously that vet check is probably pretty important and definitely to Mm -hmm. rule out anything that might be going on. Um, I did have one client that had allergies and the dog had allergies. Um, (laughs) And, yeah, once they (laughs) overcame them, the dog started that that regression because it went from 30 Mm -hmm. minutes to five minutes. Yeah, but once we got that sorted out, they're on two hours now, I think. Yeah. 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 That can make a big difference. And and you can kind of, yeah, we could really pinpoint it. That was the good thing about that one in particular. We knew exactly what it was. 
Yeah. It's so nice when you can pinpoint yeah. <laughs> it. And I think it's like, it's kind of comforting, you know, to know that there's a reason for something, but even when, Oh, the other one that I kind of see sometimes is, um, a decrease in physical or mental enrichment. Sometimes, um, that oh, can be like a seasonal thing, like, Oh, it's been really raining a lot mm. or it's been really cold outside. And so, you know, there's been a big decrease in how they, um, support their dog in that way. And like for, you know, the first maybe week it's okay because the dog has enough padding of, of that, you know, welfare support. And then all of a sudden the dog's like, wait a minute, I'm not getting this anymore. And so you can kind of see, um, that effect training too. So I do like to look at kind of, you know, kind of throw the net out wide and look at all of those things. Um, also dietary um, stuff. Yeah. As yeah well. Gastro is a big one. Um, but mm. also, uh, doing your absence when the dog's expecting something, like I've seen it when they're oh, yeah. dinner or something like that, or they're expecting mm-hmm. mums just come home, they're expecting they normally have playtime or they go for their walk or whatever it right. is. And dogs can tell the time. <laughs> they know exactly <laughs> what day it is, what day of the week. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, when, you, when they're expecting that food, walk, play, whatever it is, and you decide, mm-hmm. oh, I'm going to leave you home alone. <laughs> Like right, right. Impact them. Another one. Now I'm just like thinking through things more. Is um, when the person isn't training, doing home alone training consistently. Like either mm. because their schedule is busy or they don't have a headspace for it anymore. Or you know, but to be successful, you know, it is something that you have to do regularly. So. Um, if it is a headspace issue, like you just, you know, have other stuff going on in your life and it just feels like too much. Um, you know, sometimes even, a just one, one-to-one session with, um, a, a SA pro or somebody who specializes in separation anxiety can be really useful because then you can kind of say, okay, I'm looking for like the minimum I need to do for my dog right now, because, you know, maybe something traumatic has happened in your life or whatever. Um, and we can kind of help, help you devise a plan to support your dog the best way you can. Um, and, and that may be just managing, um, for, for the short term, but consistency and training is, is a really important thing. Um, yeah. And you see it, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it with your clients when you, they, um, they've been working at something for a few months or a couple of months, and then they, for whatever it could just be something like you know they've got exams or they've got work commitments or you know guests staying or you know they have to drop either they just don't Mm -hmm. have the headspace or they have to drop the top um the amount of training back right and when they come back to it the dog's like what what not doing this what (laughs) (laughs) yeah 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 that can that can be that can be a big one um so um, what should people do mm. if they are experiencing a regression or a plateau? Um, what are some ideas that we have to help people get through that? Um, well, I mean, obviously, if they can determine what it is and resolve that, that would be the first step. But mm-hmm. um, dropping the time back that, you know, to a time that the dog can cope with would be um, a go-to um, and then again start building up that consistency and then gradually gradually lengthening the time provided the dog's able to cope with it um, mm-hmm. and start de- start the process again hopefully mm-hmm. it'll go smoother and quicker because the dog's been there and done that but we can only go at the dog's pace as well so yep yep yeah and sometimes when a dog is kind of recovering a duration that like, exactly how you said it, when they're recovering a duration, they can get there more quickly, mm-hmm. but it's, it's some dogs don't. Right. So we do have to really make sure that we are going at the dog's pace. That's a really important thing because, you know, if the dog is having even slightly uncomfortable sessions, but they're being exposed to that over and over, um, you know, that's one of the reasons they can kind of get to that plateau or regression anyways is when we're pushing them too hard um Mm. you know pushing them right out of that comfort comfort zone so it may not look like a you know 
big panic attack, but it could be that the dog is just like, "Hmm, I'm not really comfortable with this. One of the other things that I find can contribute to um, regression, we we probably should have talked about this in the other section, but I'm just (laughs) thinking of it now. So we'll talk about it now. Um, Is if your dog has other behavioral struggles. So what I'm talking about is like noise sensitivity um, or um, reactions to other people and dogs while they're on leash, or if they're generally fearful or anxious, um, you know, if those other things are, um, if they're exposed to anxiety, fear and anxiety on a regular basis, um, then that can put them in a state of mind where they're not really able to take on the training as well. Right. Mm. So they're, less able to learn. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. And so we really want to make sure that we're looking at the whole picture. I totally get it. If somebody's like, I can only work on one thing and separation anxiety is the most important thing. That's totally respectable and understandable, but let's talk about some ways that we might be able to Um, manage those other things so that your dog isn't being exposed to um, negative experiences regularly, because we know that can have long-term effects, um, long-term negative effects on, on just, you know, your dog's welfare and life expectancy, everything, ability to learn, you know, all of, all of the things. So I would just want to make sure that even if you don't feel like you're in the position to work on those multiple things that we at least try to look at how we can mitigate, um, manage and set your dog up for success um, Mm. overall. Yeah. And maybe if you, if there's five things you need to work on, prioritize them and work on the one that's the number one priority and then work on the next one. Then the Yeah. Right. Right. And I do find that, you know, not everybody is game for trying um, medication to support their dog right away. And no. again, you know, talk through that with your vet and your trainer and kind of come up with like, um, just discuss your concerns um, to see if, if um, you know, what the best course is for your dog. But yeah. I do find that dogs that have like a cluster of behavioral um, struggles like kind of all centering around fear-based or anxiety-based things, um, I am more inclined to, you know, really examine that more closely because those dogs really do need the extra support. Yeah. And I think if if a dog is um, not making any progress at all or is very, you know, it's, or it, it was and then it's not all of a sudden, then we do mm-hmm. need to look at medication. And, I mean... You know, I do understand that some own, some dog guardians don't want to look at medication, but mm-hmm. sometimes it's just appropriate, unfortunately. Um, and if a dog is already on medication and the same thing is happening, then maybe we need to look at tweaking the medication. Maybe it's not mm-hmm. the right dose. Maybe it's not the right medication. And, again, conversation for your vet. So we're not vets. Yes, but, um, definitely. So- <laughs> We can't recommend medication in, in particular, but we can say have a conversation with your vet. And, mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and 100%. unfortunately, uh, I actually did a live on this last week on natural remedies. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, unfortunately, really, most people that have tried the natural remedies, whatever they look like, and there's a zillion of them, so we can't really talk mm-hmm. about all of them, but they don't find that they're really that great that effective Mm -hmm. um and Mm -hmm. it's as with any medication whether it's for us or for our dogs it they work differently for different people or different dogs so same with natural remedy so you might get somebody say yeah i put an adaptor collar on and it was amazing and it worked really well and you'll get the other person saying it didn't do anything for my dog so depends on the dog also depends on the severity of the case as well so Mm -hmm. um but so Mm -hmm. you know at least with a vet prescribed medication, they are skilled enough to tweak the dose, tweak the medic type of medication right. um, for your dog. So tailored for mm-hmm. the dog as opposed mm-hmm. to something you buy over the counter. Right, right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, um, yes. 
Right. Everything you just said. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So um, do you have any other tips or thoughts? Um, I mean, yes, it would be nice if we could determine what is the cause of any variability or regression. If we can, then we can specifically address that, especially if it's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. related to something medical. Um, however, if we can't, then we can't get caught up in that. We just need to go, yes. okay, this has happened. We've got this going on, this regression, this variability. What are we going to do about it and start tackling that? Right, um, right. Look for additional support in regards to medication if it's needed um, and training too um i think i think that's really important if you're doing this on your own and you're finding that you're getting stuck um i do think reaching out to a professional uh even like i said even if it's just one session to to really um try to tweak make little tweaks to your training um maybe you know, another set of eyes looking at video mm. to make sure you're not missing more subtle signs of anxiety. Um, at, because like we said, if, if we're missing those subtle signs of anxiety, that can really um, be a big reason for regression. And it's possible that you may need to redo your threshold um, baseline assessment. Um, mm -hmm. Because for example, uh, one of my clients, darling little Frankie, who's a mini schnauzer, it's going quite well, um, and now he's had some really major um, health issues and he's been at the vets and they were going to have to start force feeding him and all this stuff, really, really terrible stuff. Now I he has he's having a break from training at the moment um, and I'm, when mm -hmm. she starts back, we're going to have to drop the time back. Cause yeah. It's, yeah, it's been, I think it's been about three weeks now, so I must reach out. To yeah, him. I've... I've had two similar cases recently where the dog had some pretty big medical issues and had to take a break from training while the pet parents had helped address and, and support their dog through those and then starting back up. And one of them pretty much started right back at the beginning again. Wow. Um, and then the other one is <clears throat> um, didn't have to start back at the beginning, but, you know, drastically reduce their, um, their uh, target durations when they got back, but, but they are moving. Um, at least the second one is moving through the training really quickly at this point. So um, they've already recovered their time and, and everything. So it's, 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 it's okay. You know, mm -hmm. um, but you know, the other thing to kind of think about is if you do nothing, then you're not gaining anything. Um, you're not gaining that freedom and, and the peace of mind, knowing that that you can leave when when you need to. Um, so, you know, even though it feels like baby steps, I think it's still something that's that's really worth taking the time to work through with your dog because it not only affects their welfare um, mm. but yours as well. Um, it, it's really hard to to always have that contingency plan. And so working towards um, that freedom is, I think, in the end, really, really worth it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, your choices don't do anything. Oh, she's got off at last. <laughs> don't do anything um, and live with it or do some training and be able to walk out that door without feeling anxious, mm -hmm. without feeling stressed, without feeling guilty without feeling resentful, without feeling like a prisoner in your own home. Right. Or right. as one of my things. Facebook group um, members said, she calls her dog her fairy jailer. Oh. I know. And I've, yeah. I've been stealing yeah. it and borrowing it and using it. <laughs> I think it's like yeah. a really good, good way of describing it, yeah, if, if yeah. you don't address it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> so um, if your dog is stuck or in a regression, be a little bit of a detective and, and see if there is a why. If there isn't a why, we still can work through it. Um, you know, if there's not a why you can discern, we can still work through it. One of the ways to try to get to the bottom of the why is, is work with your vet, you know, rule out any pain or medical issues that might be going on. Um, then we want to figure out what can they do now? 
um, now that they're in a different place um, and then start building time gradually um, as you were before. Um, looking to control other factors, like if they have other behavioral issues, making sure you're training consistently, making sure they're not going over threshold even by a little bit. Um, and getting a medication review by your vet. I think you've covered everything quite actually, Stacey. Um, but we um, can help you with any work that you need. If you need help from a specialist, absolutely to one of us. And, yeah. and, uh, and, you know, to hit that point home, it's especially with behavioral, any behavioral issue and any uh, behavioral struggle that your dog is having that's really taking a toll on your life and your well-being as well as theirs. Um, it's always better to reach out sooner rather than later. Um, so if you are struggle, if your dog is struggling with separation related behaviors and you're um, feeling jailed in your own home, you know, reach out to one of us. We're, yeah. we're happy to help. We can uh, unlock the key, let you out. Yes. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, thank you for Very listening good. to Tales from the Dog House, Separation Anxiety Explained. You can find us on Apple, Google, Spotify, Audible, Amazon, all the, your good listening apps. If you want to listen to us um, in your ear, if you want us in your ear, or if you want to see us and our doggies, or my doggies anyway, I'm not sure where Rowan is, <laughs> um, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is also Tales from the Dog House, Separation Anxiety Explained. Um, but I'm Ness Jones. I am in Australia, but I also work remotely, same as Stacey. Um, and have clients that we don't care where you live. <laughs> Basically, yes. do we? Okay. And I'm from Separation Anxiety in Dogs Decoders. And you can find me at nessjones.com. I'm Stacey Bell with Focused Fun. You can find me at focusedfun.net. And that's my dogs in the background. Yeah. Playing. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, <laughs> see you. Bye. Bye.